premise is they're protecting kids. They're not. Uh, for every one kid out of 100 that might actually come from an abused home, the other 99 are not. And 100% of the time, they usually go to a worse environment. So um, especially once you learn your rights, and the uh, I mean, all you got to do is read the international... The United Nations uh, Conference on the uh, Rights of the Child. Download and read that. They'll, it'll say right in there what your rights are and what your child's rights are. And government has no claim to your children, period. End of story. Um, they don't even claim that. That's why they try to get you into family court. They try to get you to agree to arbitration with this judge. Um, I don't know if people have followed any of this stuff, but I think one of the judges of family court here in Manitoba a year ago that uh, is, is somebody who allegedly, allegedly is deciding who gets to keep the kids and if CFS can keep your kids and whether your kids are going to a foster home, this judge was, was a member of a sex group, an online sex group, one of the most morally defunct people you could imagine. Is sitting on a bench deciding what's going to happen with your children? Like, are you kidding yeah. me? So, no, well, I don't take to that it, at all. Is it... Is it not the most of it is because we've signed them over to the state anyway, though? We Absolutely signed them over. Not. They were born. We gave. No, Go ahead. we have not. What we did when we signed the particulars of live birth is we actually uh, we consolidated their estate. We protected their estate for them. We said these people, these children, were born on this landmass. They have a share of the Commonwealth. They have a, a share of everything that the Canadian government is supposed to be maintaining and protecting for us in the whole nine yards. You in no way, shape, or form subrogated your rights to your children to the government. That is a presumption made in court that is not rebutted when you hire a lawyer. So every, people, no. have to, people have to remember the entire point of lawyers and the law society is to... Further confuse the situation. Confuse the situation, get you arguing when there's no need for argument, to get you to contract with courts and to, to agree to arbitration when you're not obligated to. They're all members of the Law Society, and the purpose of the Law Society is to pervert the course of justice. That's a friend of mine that coined that phrase. He said that to me one day. He goes, you know, you realize the entire purpose of the Law Society is to pervert the course of justice. And I thought about it for a minute, and I started laughing. I said, that is possibly the most true statement I've ever heard in my life. Yeah. Now, do do lawyers understand what you're telling us? Do, uh, do lawyers get this? Most of them do, uh, because I've been to court to help people where a lawyer has shown up to try to def to try to speak for them while they're in jail. Where I've shown up and said, "No, no, this guy's not their lawyer. I have power of attorney. This guy's only here because he was asked to come here probably by another lawyer to make sure that this person stays in jail." And uh, they get real nervous all of a sudden. They don't like okay, me in the courthouse. I think uh, there's still uh, there's. I mean, people have to understand, I'm not this untouchable sovereign that's out driving around with a, with a shield, you know, a Star Wars friggin' shield around me that they're terrified of coming near. Like, no, 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 I understand how to go after them and, and harm them and pay for what they've done to me. But uh, I think even right now, I was supposed to be in court this morning with somebody, but there's still an arrest on site order at the provincial courthouse in Manitoba for me because they don't want me in the courthouse so badly that they have the sheriff's an order down there that I don't even know what for to arrest me on site, apparently. And I didn't want to go down there this morning to deal with it because I figured, well, shit, if I'm in jail, I can't speak to these guys this afternoon, so I'll just take care of that on Friday. <laughs> now, explain the whole, um, uh, oh, geez, um, uh, power of attorney to us. Because, uh, well, to the listeners, because you were explaining this to me on Thursday. Yeah. If, you, uh, if you have, like, a nation type thing, five people in a nation, you all sign power of attorney to each other, and then you speak for each other or as that, the, you know, as power of attorney for the person who's in jail. Yeah. Let's cover that a little bit so people can understand what it is you're talking about. Okay, that's not one of our, that, that, that's, that's one of our recent advents, and that's not, that's nothing to do with a nation, really. All this is, I mean, really all a nation is, is a group of people coming together for a common purpose. If you look up the definition of nation, that's what it is. You don't even have to be formally recognized. Um, that's all that you're getting is formal recognition or, or a trade deal or a treaty with another nation when you do get recognition with them. But anyway, so we came up with the idea a little while ago that, well, it seems to me that the whole purpose of government is to divide and conquer us and to get us so f fighting with ourselves and fighting with everybody, we don't have time to come together uh, to, to unite and to help each other against this common enemy. So we said, okay, well, every time we're in jail, we're pretty much... We're, we're castrated, we're powerless, we can't do anything from jail, we're, we're, we're pretty impotent until we get out, and then that's when they want us to sign contracts to get out uh, just so we can get out and defend ourselves. So one of the first things we started doing a little while back was uh, every 
every person that's a member of our group that we think has has reached a level where uh, where they're a responsible person, it's up to our discretion. We we all kind of have deals with one another where we've all given each other a power of attorney over one another to deal with situations like this should we be arrested and thrown in jail. And now the government's starting to realize what we've done uh, because as soon as one of us gets arrested and thrown in jail, the next day there's already liens being filed against the government and they're being sued by the person that's in jail. And we can do that because we're acting for that individual because we have power of attorney to act for their person. We're just a director for their person the same way they are. So when you understand roles, you understand that you can act, you can actually carry out a role in somebody else's legal person. They can appoint you as a director. They can give you power of attorney to act as them. They can give you the authority to do what they would do if they are incapacitated. So that's exactly what we've done now. So we want the we want government to know that they should start to fear the fact that if they simply arrest us and throw us in jail, knowing that we can't do anything, that, that that's now changed. That's not the case anymore. Now we. We have a group that basically steps up and says, "No, no, no. Uh, we have we have our own United Nations now. You've attacked one of us. You've attacked all of us, and everybody comes together. And we we just have a paperwork storm going on. And we have papers filed the next day. So I think that's got them a little more wary now. And I like that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. To get, have, keep them on their toes and running scared is probably the best thing that you could be doing, yeah. or that we all could be doing." Um, now, I have another question here that was sent as a message from Peter. Um, he asks, I've got many different answers from different people. I'd like to know about crossing the border into the U.S. or other countries as a free man. Yeah. As a um, sovereign. Not, uh, we were going to experiment with this recently, but it, it's just a, it's a matter of how many times I want to I wanna go and start poking people and wind up in jail just so I can prove my point. Um, you don't need ID to cross the border. The border isn't real, anyways. It's it's a it's a physical mark between the two independent nations. But there's plenty of stories of people who cross the border with a with their name written in a Bible. All right, make up your own ID. Um, I do believe in giving notice of who you are when you're out and about, like I cover in one of my videos. Like if I was to cross the border with my with my license plate and my ID. I'd probably have a, a, a hassle. I'd probably have a, a, a real tough time of it the first time. You know, they might even arrest me, guns drawn, kind of stuff. And I'm really not too worried about that. We have to start making these people become accustomed to the fact that we know what our rights are now, and we're going to start enforcing them. And the first time it happens, it's going to be a mess. You're going to be challenged. You're going to get in problems. You have to know who you are. Don't do it unless you're prepared to do it. You may want to send notice to the border that you're coming to the State Department if you're going to go to the United States. Hey, just so you're aware, I'm going to be coming across the border on this day. This is who I am. I'm going to have my own license plates. I'm a sovereign. You're going to, I'm going to make them aware of who I am at the border. If you detain me unre- like for unreasonable means and unwarranted action, you don't have a claim against me, or you're just not going to let me across because I'm not an American citizen, um, that's not their land anyways. Um, I'm giving you notice I'm going to be crossing the border. I'm going to give you 10 days to reply to me and say, no, you cannot cross the border without the following papers. Right? Give them notice and give them time to respond to you. If they don't, take those papers down to the border with you and say, hey, look, I contacted your State Department. They never replied. I guess they don't have a problem with me crossing the border, and that's your superior. So have a nice day and cross the border. You've you got to come up with that. That's your own remedy. That's what I mean, but people have to create their own remedy. They have to create their own process. They have to give notice and contact these people and uh, and unfortunately it's you know being a sovereign doesn't mean you can just go and start doing whatever you want it means you're competent to handle your own affairs that's what a sovereign is so if you're not handling your own affairs you're not a sovereign if you think that being a sovereign means you can just walk around and do whatever the hell you want well you're going to learn in a real quick hurry that that's not what a sovereign is no you actually have to take care of business it, you're taking care of. You actually of have to work for it. You actually have to work for it. It's not something that just is makes you a slovenly sloth walking yeah. around the planet, just there doing nothing go. and expecting everybody to bow yeah. down to you. Not or whatever responsible the case may be. for your actions, exactly. So if if, if yeah. you want to be somebody not responsible for your actions, and, and it's too much effort to do any of this and to read and to learn, then just go back to watching TV and don't bitch about what government does because I don't want to hear it. <laughs> Exactly. Anybody who's going to take any of this and go, well, whatever, you have no right to bitch. You have no right to complain. And the thing is, is with any information that you have, once you get it, and all of us free thinkers that are here, that are listening to the show right now, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Because the moment you learned something wasn't right, you stopped doing it. 
you stopped eating McDonald's. Well, most of you have. You stopped, you know, you, you stopped eating McDonald's. You stopped feeding the corporation as much as possible. You're looking for any way you can to walk away from, from the beast. So now that you have this kind of information, you have to keep working at it. You have to keep working. Nothing worth having is ever easy. And that's, that's just the truth. And anything easy is not worth having. No, and that's why I think government actually serves a valuable function there. Like, I'm not against them at all, actually. I think that, the, I think that the, them being out there cracking heads of morons is actually a very good thing. I don't want a planet of morons walking around out there. I only want to deal with people who are responsible and act in a civilized manner. Right? Yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, uh, I'm thankful for every experience I had with the government because if it wasn't for them beating me about my head, I wouldn't have learned everything I learned. I wouldn't be the person I am today. No, so definitely not. Yeah, no, it is. It's a very good thing. And you, you see, with everything that you've gone through, I mean, I'm sure there's been tons of hard times for you. <laughs> it's not been any kind of walk in the park. I mean, you've had some experiences that have made me cringe listening. I don't know what you want to share, but I'm just saying you've been through hell and back oh, yeah. to get where you are now. And, I mean, you haven't stopped. You've just got more resolve to keep on going and to take that, that step farther now and spread the awareness, yep. which is something that is huge, uh, th that we have to be sharing it with each other and not charging each other for this information. We're supposed to be loving and helping each other. That's what people do. We stand by side by side. Nobody's leading. Nobody's following. We're all side by side in this. Well, if you do believe in something greater than yourself, you do believe in, in, the, in, in doing right, uh, you are going to be rewarded for your actions. Period. Whether yeah. or not you want to call that uh, like a, like a galactic uh, justice or whatever you want to call it, God uh, don't care. And, and no, no, it's not. It's not even important, really. As long, I mean, I do have an issue with the gods of man. That's my issue that I will deal with in my own time, and that's the way I think it should be with any with anybody. Um, but the point is that the and I've had some people say, well, I don't like the way that he goes on about, you know, we are, this is God's last will and testament, and yada 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 yada. Okay, well, fine. That doesn't make the information less valid. Well, and you that's can get it. something that people need to understand. His information is not valid just because he says something about God's last will and testament and us being the you know the the beneficiary of that. Yeah, well, because I mean that's even some, that's even a separate complete a separate complete issue. That's why I tell people like I usually recommend don't don't even bring that up in court. There's no reason to bring the Bible into the courtroom. That's not what's going on there. Exactly. So don't. A lot of people just they're hung up on it though, right? Which yeah, is why I'm bringing it to light now, because they are hung up on it, and it, need, it, it does need to be addressed to some extent. Yeah, you know what? Download a copy of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Download a copy of that. Read it. The next time you go to court, have a copy of that filed into the court record. And then stand up and say, excuse me, do you recognize and respect this document, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights? If you don't, mm -hmm. I'm leaving, because why would I be somewhere where somebody doesn't recognize the Universal Declaration of Human Rights? Does that sound like something God or something Bible-ish? No, I haven't yeah. done that yet, but I, I just thought that up right now. I mean, shit, do it. Take the, I mean, I got, I got threatened with uh, contempt of court for, uh, for mentioning the Charter of Rights and Freedoms in court. I stood up and I said, excuse me, do you, rec do you recognize and respect the Charter and Rights and Freedoms, which is your own statute? Mr. Clifford, you're this close to being held in contempt of court. How could that <laughs> possibly be contempt of court? Because <laughs> he doesn't want you educating the rest of the buggers that are sitting behind you. Of course not. If, I, if, if he actually acknowledged that document, they'd be violating my human rights. Yeah. But they're not claiming that they're violating my human rights. They're, they're, they're not, uh, or they're not claiming I don't have human rights. That's a better way of putting it. They're claiming that I performed a function of government and I violated one of their codes while I was performing a function of government. The problem is their, their claim doesn't stand up the minute you attack it. The second you attack it, it has no standing. And people have to learn how to, once they dismantle that, to take everything right over to, to, to civil court and to sue the shit out of the government. People need to understand, too, that, um, well, okay, the idea that there's a Bible in a jail cell. You said to me, you can, write, you can read yourself and then write yourself right out of your sentence just by taking the time, if you're sitting in jail, 
to read that piece of uh, the law books, sorry, not the Bible, the law books that they give you, that they provide for you, that you would never need a lawyer.